Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome to the start of a brand new campaign here today on the channel. We're going to be playing Napoleon Total War Darth Mod as the United Kingdom. So, I hope you guys like the sound of that. We're going to be playing on a hard campaign and very hard battle difficulty. That is what is recommended for Darth Mod on Napoleon. So, I can't wait to get stuck into a brand new series. Alrighty, I'm going to play the intro and we'll get stuck into the campaign. His godless revolutionaries have no respect for the status quo. They insist on meddling with the balance of power on mainland Europe. Defenseless Liguria has been annexed by France, and such behavior cannot be tolerated. As a result, Great Britain has joined forces with Austria and Russia to oppose French continental ambitions. Sweden, Portugal, and the smaller Italian states have vowed to aid the struggle. But the three great powers must take most of the strain in opposing this monstrous revolutionary threat. Whilst Austria and Russia attempt to deal with Napoleon on the fields of Bavaria, you must ensure that his navy is kept in check. Admiral Villeneuve's fleet must be intercepted by the Royal Navy, lest the armies of France march on British shores. Then, ensure blockades are maintained across all French ports. Finally, your long-standing ally, Portugal, must be aided in pushing through into occupied Spain, opening a second front and splitting the might of Napoleon's armies. Okay, guys, how you doing? Welcome, welcome to the campaign map. Super excited to be back in Napoleon Total War. I had a blast with my Napoleon French campaign earlier in the year, and you guys really enjoyed that series as well. So, I've been craving another Napoleon campaign for quite some time. So, the objective of this series is to get rid of that pesky Napoleon <laughs> on the continent. I think we'll try and like historically invade France. I think I might sort of move through the Netherlands, Belgium, and maybe we'll start an attack from Gibraltar. I don't really want to rush like Normandy super quickly. We'll take our time with this one and we'll go through and have a look at some of the generals that we're working with. So we're currently under the reign of George III, but the main general and protagonist on this campaign will be Arthur Wellesley, 1st Duke of Wellington, an Anglish-Irish-born soldier, a Tory statesman, twice Prime Minister, and a leading military and political figure, of course, in the 19th century. He's best known as being one of the best commanders at the time, and who won and ended the Napoleonic Wars 
when he defeated the Coalition at the Battle of Waterloo. So hopefully we can have our Waterloo in this series. He fought early in his career in the Netherlands, India and Monsoy. So Wellington is known as having a really adaptive tactical style in battles. He actually plays quite defensively in warfare. And it actually resulted historically in several victories against a enemy opposition with a larger numerical force. I want to be sort of hyper-aggressive in this campaign, but regardless, hopefully we can replicate some of his victories throughout this series. So let's move down south now to look at the Navy, the leader of the Navy, Admiral Nelson, leader, strategist, and decisive British naval commander. He's even seen to this day as one of the greatest naval commanders in all of history. So this must be replicating the 1805 Battle of Trafalgar. We might have to play that one here today. I guess this is the Franco and Spanish fleet that come out of the port. Hopefully we can gain victory on HMAS Victory. And I guess this time around not allow Nelson to get fatally shot by a French sharpshooter. He's got that famous quote, doesn't he? England expects that every man will do his duty. I'm really hoping that every English man can do that in this series. I've been to Nelson's column in Trafalgar in real life. It's actually quite a spectacle. I remember I was on a tour with someone and someone goes, Is that Napoleon up there? And I, was, I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> and I reckon ne poor old Nelson will probably roll in his grave as well. Okay, just going through the lists, I think we'll basically set a rally point for London. We'll try and move most of the armies from Wales, Ireland and Scotland down south. And then we'll make a play maybe for... Belgium occupied France or maybe the Netherlands um, and once I've got enough military forces I am tempted to send a full stack down to Gibraltar we cannot allow the rock to fall it's a really crucial choke point as well if we want to protect our trade lanes so we'll move those Highlanders down and we'll rally everyone just outside London because what you want to do playing as the UK, you want to basically block off the channel, Gibraltar, and the north as well as so you can dominate those eastern trade nodes. Okay, let's have a look at some of these other generals. Michael Stowell. I kind of wish there was more generals. I wonder if there's a mod. Because Napoleon didn't have all these generals in the last Darth Mod campaign. There was like 30 or so I would have liked to see. So, Stowell, London born in England, fought in the Revolutionary Wars in America. He actually fought in the battle for Bunker Hill. He actually had a previous invasion in Holland, so he's got some experience. And later, he actually founded the county of Brittany in northern France after liberating it. Moving on now to someone who's a little bit more known. Uh, John Moore. Sir John Moore. Scottish-born, British Army General, <laughs> known as Moore of Coruna. He is best known for his military training and reforms, and ultimately his death in the battle. Hopefully, we don't do the same with him and, and withdraw the army and, and get himself killed. So, we might actually send him down to Spain. He might be the general that can do the conquest of it. That's what I'm thinking. Try and have some alternative timelines with John Moore, perhaps. Moving now to Admiral William Cornwallis. He was actually the brother of Charles Cornwallis, a British commander at the Siege of York. He was sort of best known as being the Channel Fleet Defender in the Napoleonic Wars. So hopefully we could try and let him hang it around there and try and protect it. And last but not least, we have George Elphinstone. I don't know too much about him. I think he was just a naval officer throughout the period. But hopefully we can get some more officers in the future that can be a little bit more renowned. Or maybe we can make these generals into absolute beasts of history. <laughs> okay, well, now that we've met everyone, let's put them to work for the glory of the British Empire. So we're currently at war with the Netherlands and France. So, I think, yeah, pushing up there is probably the play into the Netherlands. There's a couple of trade nodes here, potentially spare. That one's got no one on it. Um, it's so worth getting these trade nodes. You can get upwards of a couple thousand early on in the campaign. So, we'll send this trade ship south to see if there's anyone here. Okay, unfortunately, there's a Spanish fleet. We found this Spanish. There's three in there. I kind of want to use Nelson for Trafalgar. We might need to use... The Channel Navy to deal with that eventually. Okay, so we're rallying up. I guess we can dive into uh, diplomacy. So we're currently at war with Spain and f France. We're Protestant, obviously, and we're a constitutional monarchy. We've got a bunch of alliances here, which is fantastic. 
Austria, Sicily, Naples, Russia, and Sweden. So most of the continent is allied with us. Oh, the Danes nor the Norwegians don't like us either. And then, of course, we've got Portugal as well. So I wouldn't mind maybe getting a couple of peace treaties with these factions. There's a bunch of factions I'm still not trading with as well. So we definitely need to get that going. So hello, Russia. Um, and then we've got Prussia as well that we have an open trade with. So let's negotiate with Frederick Wilhelm and Alexander. Would you like trade? George III sends his regards. They've all accepted. And the Ottomans like us quite a bit. We've still got trade with them. So we're at war with a couple of minor factions. So Bavaria, would you like peace, potentially? They're not interested. Um, what about the Kingdom of Italy? Nope. What about the Swiss? No, either. Okay. What about Württemberg? I guess they're not interested either. So, Portugal. We, we still haven't got trade with them. I'd love to get an alliance with them. Potentially even military access. We could actually land... That'd be so much easier, landing our forces there with military access rather than landing the armies in Gibraltar. Okay, so they're not interested in an alliance. They only want trade. Which I'm happy to accept. Yeah, they don't want this flat alliance. Fair enough. And then there's some, like, I don't even know what this is. Some German state. Become protectorate, maybe? I was going to say, I can guarantee you, if that's what you sort of want. I kind of wish we had an alliance starting off with Portugal, to be honest. Okay, government-wise, obviously we have George III, not the most popular monarch, obviously. Um... Our government is not too bad. We It's actually really not too bad. We can change in anyone if we need to. C67. William Pitt is the Prime Minister. But we've got a really good Treasury and Naval Commander as well. Trade-wise, mostly getting it from North America. Cotton, tobacco, and furs from the... North American continent. Okay. Uh, research in technology, I guess we dive into. I still don't know the the meta for this. <laughs> like, what's, what's your tech sort of blueprint? Like, what do you guys sort of prioritize mostly? Because, like, you want to sort of reduce unit reduction of, like, the cost. You want to up their efficiency. You want growth. You want wealth. And... A couple of others. So maybe it's maybe I'm overthinking it, but you can't really go wrong with a lot of this stuff. Like my, like national debt minus upkeep is probably good because we we're, we're going to be smashing out units soon. We're going on a massive recruitment splurge. Okay, so what else have we got to deal with? Uh, we've got the objectives. Now I put it on just historical for now. We could go for sort of a continental. Um, victory, but I think this will be enough. Like, trying to take those victory conditions will be rather challenging regardless. Like, if we let France build up a bit, we're going to have a hard time pushing in there. And also, if we don't rush them as well, like, that will make things a lot harder. Because we want to be focusing on the French and the Spanish. So, we'll try and get some units where we can. Arthur Wellesley's army looks quite good. I think we'll go with, like, five... Of those good old red coats, and then we want to can yeah we want to be constantly recruiting in Gibraltar because we don't want to get caught down there from a Spanish rush. So even the Spanish navy is just south there as well. Uh, fleets wise as well, we want to put slops in basically all of the naval ports just so no one can block our trade and, and get in there and we want to probably try and get some more trade fleets as well we actually might want to look to upgrade some of the ports have sort of the northern ones which are a bit safer probably be trade focused like money while the southern docks sort of on the coast 
and maybe near Gibraltar probably can go full on military. So, I think pushing into the Netherlands is probably the play. Because we might actually be able to destroy them. So is this enough? I think it might be. I think we might risk it and see what we're sort of looking at. So we could go into Normandy and Khan. That'd be quite easy to do. But I think we'll sort of go a little bit realistic. Like it'd be there'd be huge. Like the 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 Brit the um the French Navy realistically should have a bunch of ships there. Like we would we shouldn't be able to hit it with impunity. You know what I'm saying? So I think we'll go for a harder challenge here. We'll go and try and take Amsterdam. We'll drop off Wellington and Stoll with three units of cavalry, three cannons, the rest made up of red co coats, and we'll try and take and liberate the Netherlands. I think I'm going to occupy it if I do manage to take it, but we'll use this as our base of operations. And also, the uh, the rivers here are going to be quite easy to defend as well. We could always push a lot of bridge battles if we need to force them to go at it. Okay, so... I can't think of much else we can do. I guess they could attack us. There's not too many forces inside. And this will just destroy the Dutch Navy. Because that can be quite a problem as well. If you're fighting Spanish, um, Dutch, and French navies. So we'll move our navy down here. So Nelson against Pierre. Yeah, so this is the battle for Trafalgar. The Spanish navy isn't f too far behind. So we'll play this one. Um, I don't tend to play naval battles too much. I sort of shy away from them. I'm not the best at them. But we're playing a United Kingdom campaign. We've got Admiral Nelson. Surely that must count for something. So, um, I can't remember the last time I did a naval battle. I usually just auto-resolve them because they're still a little bit clunky. So, I think what we're better off doing is grouping everyone up. I want to sort of make just a line of ships... I think that's the play. Like, we'll, we'll allow Nelson to be at the front. Lead from the front. And then we'll get everyone to sort of... Where's the formation? Oh, what I'm looking for. That one. That's what I'm yep. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Something like that. Like a strong, long line. And we'll work our way up and then try and wrap around the French fleet. So, I want it to be like here. Because we have to do a, like a right hook turn, don't we? Okay, so Nelson's leading from the front. And then we've got our second best ship. I think that's good. So it's currently a 60-40 in our favor. But here is, I guess, HMAS victory with Nelson at the front. Hopefully we can keep him alive this time around. So we've got shrapnel. We've got chain. And we've got standard shot. We're probably going to try and keep quite a range so we'll go with standard shot for now so if I can yeah so if I do that it's all chain linked together so everyone's gonna go in the same formation I think that's what we want so let's have a look at the French fleet okay so they have some smaller ships here yeah we definitely have naval supremacy over them you would think so they've got three smaller ships at the front and the three larger ones Nelson is slowly but surely sailing his way around and I think what we'll do is we'll try and keep this line and then basically just try and do circles around them. <laughs> like continue to try and wrap around. That's the play. So go something like that. I just take it's so like tough to sort of move everyone around or we'll speed things up slightly. I actually don't know the difference in naval battles compared to Darth Mod and Vanilla. This is my first time... Yeah, this actually might be my first Darth Mod naval battle, to be honest. So, it looks like some of the ships are firing. They're getting some shots off because they have an angle. But yeah, we'll try and go with a, a broad shot around. Yeah, so if we, we might pull to the left slightly just to open it up. So, we're nearly on target there. Uh, so that's a right side shot. So we're getting some shots off already. Oh, we've managed to clip the French fleet. They're returning fire as well. Maybe I need to play more naval battles. Because they are quite fun. <laughs> Once you sort of get the hang of it. Okay. So I guess we'll load things up. A right side shot. 
I think you are better to sort of focus the firepower if you can, but I'm not patient. I guess we'll just let the standard shot go on. Okay, so we are clipping them there slightly. It's putting a little bit of pressure on them. So if they want to go forward like that, I guess we just sort of keep on pulling to the left because they're going to cut right through the line, aren't they? They're just going straight for it. Okay, that might be a problem. So just try and swing around. So that's what I want. I might have come too close, actually. So, yeah, just try and swing the line around. Okay, this could be a problem. Their smaller ships are trying to cut me off. Or cut the line off. Because there's no ramming in this, is there? Like, are you going to be able to get around? You're getting dangerously close to them. But at the moment, the French fleet and the British Navy are returning fire at each other. That's what I like to see. We should be able to outgun them. That's what's usually like in these naval battles. Whoever's got the best guns and <laughs> the biggest guns and the more, <laughs> the bigger fleet wins usually. Okay. So we've managed to get three away. So we're just working down the line. They seem to be grounded a little bit more. But if we can continue to try to wrap around. Nelson's been sort of phased out a bit. Come on, swing around. So we are getting the shots off of the main flagship. Oh yeah, because like wind's a thing in this as well. With the compass, I'm assuming. Okay, so... I don't know if we're exactly winning. We are trading. It was allowing the ships to fire at will. But nothing like starting off a Napoleon campaign with a naval battle against the French. That ship there's taken a fair bit of a beating. Oh, we can repair our ships as well. So swing around there. Just try and wrap around them. Okay, so they've stopped the last three ships from coming about. Oh, they've actually split me. They, they've cut me off massively there. That's a pretty audacious attempt to come right through that. Man, if we could ram them, that would be brilliant. I want to try and avoid boarding if we can. Okay, so I need to get Nelson back into it. But I guess we're sort of protecting him, which is probably not a bad idea. Allowing him to be a little bit passive in this fight. Around the, around, allow the rest of the Navy to take most of the brunt of the fighting. Yes, yeah, so they've actually split me off big time here. Um, it's okay because there's only a couple of small annoying ships. But the big battle's sort of happening over here. Come on! You scurvy dogs! So, what the plan is, if we can defeat this fleet and the Spanish one... We might be able to essentially use Gibraltar as a choke point with the Navy and the Channel. We can have all those trade notes to the west and basically knock off any other faction that's hanging around there. Because that's where we're going to make most of our money for this campaign in trade. Because we're not going to be able to contest with the trade nodes or the, the fleets in the Mediterranean. So, it's pretty swung to about a 65% in our favor. We're doing alright at the moment. Yeah, so... Maybe what I should have done... Is not come as close. Because I'm actually quite surprised at the turning arc of some of these ships. Maybe that's something that's been reduced in Darth Mod. Okay, so we might be able to surround the, the French flagship here. They're taking a bit of a, a brunt there. And we're getting surrounded by those smaller ships at the back. They're targeting my weaker ones, which is kind of smart, I guess. I'll try and wrap around there. Just try and get on the o the outside of them. Okay. Just these larger ships take so long to come about. So, what I'll try and do is we'll try and get into a position where we can get four of our ships to focus all their firepower and just absolutely... Rain, hellfire, and death upon the French Admiral. Because we might, if we can get rid of him, we might be able to cause a rout. But let me know other naval tactics and sort of how you guys sort of line up. Some people just go with a flat line and go straight at him. 
I think going in a single line actually seemed to work good for us. Because now that we've actually got on the outside of them, we've actually flanked them quite a bit. Because look at this, we're about to get like four of our ships just absolutely hammering their flagship. Yeah, there we go. Now Nelson's getting to the thick of it. With good old HMAS victory. Okay, so they're now uh, retreating or surrendering. They've thrown up the white flag. Cowards. Okay. We've been caught there a little bit. Yeah, just keep on peppering that. Bring it down, bring it down if we can. Okay, this is one down. Four to go. Okay, you're getting... You're coming about. There you go. Yeah, now we've got five hitting it as well. That's what I want. That's what I like to see. This is kind of fun. <laughs> I guess we'll just try and mix up some of the shots. Now that we're so close to them, maybe go with a chain. And keep a couple going with the standard. Oh, wow. We are absolutely peppering the hell out of them. Hang on. We've got a right shot to come in here now. Let it go! Oh, my God. <laughs> that rip roared through them. Bloody brilliant, that is. Okay, you're getting a little bit too far in front, so you're going to have to swing around. I don't want you to get in, f in front of Nelson's firing arc. That one ship is just sort of letting the other three harass. Oh, hang on. I think they're surrendering. So, are they going to be able to withdraw? Like, I get, can we hit that anymore then? Or is it like, do we, should we move out? I guess we can repair. Yeah, so we can't hit them. That's annoying. I want to sink the damn ship. Oh, well, what we'll do is with a couple of these guys, we'll try and move them out. And I guess we'll repair the ship's mid-combat because there's only a couple of the smaller ones back. And now it's swung to definitely a 70% in our favor. So it looks like, for now, Admiral Nelson will not get run through. So we'll repair back where we can. And we'll come about to try and save that ship of ours, our weakest one. Yeah, so there's still a fair few men on that ship. I know they were getting bombarded massively, but I would have loved to sink it and to drop it to the bottom. Of the Spanish Sea. Leave it for the pirates. Black Pearl. And David Jones. Okay. So, let's swing around. It's going to take a little while to get to the sort of the other end. We'll speed things up. Maybe I should have put it on a faster speed a while ago. Because it just takes so long to... Uh, quite literally rotate a boat. Okay, so they're now coming out. Let's try and swing around like that and try and get around them. Okay, so you're hanging over here by yourself for whatever reason. So I guess we'll get these two to focus on that one. And we'll get the rest to focus on these three and come about. Oh, we're wavering a little bit there. We've somehow managed to recover. Okay, we might actually get be able to get three ships onto that just to get rid of him. Okay, they're now turning. Alright, go for this. Okay, so they're just trying to hit Nelson here. He's holding on for now. I guess we'll just move this one in front to shield him a bit. So there's only three of the French fleet left. And then we have to deal with the, the Spanish one to the south. It's a shame they didn't come in on this fight, the Spanish. I guess we just have to go hit them. Because I would have liked to fight French and Spanish ships at the same time, to be honest. 
But it might have been a little bit too hard and unfair for the British fleet. I don't know. Maybe that's actually why um, Portugal isn't allied with us at the start of the campaign. Because I have it. No, okay, that makes sense. Because I, even though historically Portugal and the United Kingdom have one of the oldest alliances in history. Or had or whatever. I guess if we were, the Spanish AI might tend to rush Portugal and just completely destroy it. Which I wouldn't mind. Maybe going trying to liberate Portugal if they lose it. Okay, so let's just speed things up. Let's wrap this up. And hopefully claim victory on the high seas for the first time. Yeah, let me know. Especially tips and tricks for naval battles. I think we did alright. Being a... I'm not unashamed to admit a naval novice in this game, but it's... It seemed to work alright. A couple of misplays here and there, but overall... I think we're about to claim a very decent victory with good old Admiral Nelson. But Pierre as well. A rather formidable and, uh, and strong general in his own right. But what annoys me at the moment is a lot of these guys surrendering. We surrender! Typical French. Pulling out the white flag. Not allowing the, the crew to sink to the bottoms of the sea. Okay. We're absolutely smashing this poor little one here. I can see why they surrendered. So where's this other... Where, so, oh, it's over here. Alright. Swing, swing about. Turn a boat. Okay. So, yeah, we've definitely won now. Alrighty. That's good. I like it. Oh, we won. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's kind of cool starting off with a naval battle in the first episode. Oh, no. We actually sunk that one. There we go. I guess one cannon shot went a little bit wayward. They kept on firing. They've surrendered. Stop firing. Send them to the sea. Well, I guess if they surrender, we can actually take the ship. We don't have to just, like, completely decimate everything, do we? <laughs> and just send it. Okay. We just want to try and wrap things up. Come on. Come back here! Yeah, we do have the option to board the ship. We'll repair Navy as they're sort of running out. Because I guess it's like free replenishment, eh? Like you don't need to probably sit it in a port. We might even need to build up the port of Gibraltar. Because they might actually not be able to house these ships. Because that's where we'll send it. But, yeah, I'm curious to see if we're going to be able to hold Gibraltar, to be honest. I would imagine, especially on this difficulty... The AI, particularly Spain, is not going to allow us to hang there too long. But we definitely need it. Essentially just to shot, stop ships coming up from the med. Okay, come on. Come back here. Alright, focus on that. There's only two little old French ships left. There we go, keep on hitting them. Come about and hit them again. Now that we're prepared, uh, repaired up, we're good. Okay, they're now probably withdrawing. No, we still seem to be firing upon them and they still seem to be returning fire. Okay. Looks like it's only one more now. That's still holding on. It's still hitting it, though. Alright, come on. Surrender! Give up. The French Navy has been decimated by good old Admiral Nelson. 
just his last friendship. Come on. Bring it down. Bring it down. Just everyone go for it. Just send it. Like actual. Hey, victory. Uh, yeah, I guess we just end the battle there. Heroic victory. Okay. That's kind of cool. Oh, wow. Look at those ships we got. Well, let's definitely bring them in. Oh, wow. We've managed to seize a bunch of French ships. We've got half a stack here now. That's fantastic. All right. So, I guess we'll get you to head further south. And intercept the Spanish fleet. So, no other Spanish on the nodes there, no. Alrighty. Okay, back up in England for a sec. Just want to check. So, we've got more military forces moving, rallying up in London. That's fine. Um, I could move the Navy out. I'm kind of tempted to do so. Because we want to try and deal with that Spanish fleet that's... Eventually, just hang, so it's hanging around on that trade node. So the last thing I want is to for that to go down and hit Nelson. So what I'll do is I'll put this force nearby. We also need to garrison the ports as well. I think we need to move that trade ship eventually as well, probably back to protect it. Yeah, I guess we'll just rally up there. But that's annoying that that trade no was taken. Okay, with the fleet, what I'll do is we'll push against the Spanish and see the odds. Oh, there's actually a reinforcing one there. Look, we've already played a naval battle today. I don't want to make this entire episode naval battles, so we'll auto-resolve that. And we've won, and we'll take another ship. Good. So they do have one in the trade node. down. Oh, that was the trade node one that came in. Oh, we've taken that off. Brilliant. All right, well, what we'll do is... We'll put the trade ship there, I guess, and we'll move the navy about here, say. So. I guess we'll just raid the trade route, just give us that extra coin. Sweet. Okay, guys, well, I found a little bit of an issue, but I'm going to be able to fix it, and it's not going to be that much of a problem. <laughs> Lucky I caught it. So... I downloaded Darth Mod properly. For whatever reason, it launched a coalition campaign and not the Darth Mod campaign when I played. So, um, I think a similar thing has happened before, but lucky I caught it. So, for some reason, in that in my units in that last half an hour were 160. They should be up to 360. And there were some elements of Darth Mod not working. So, lucky I caught it within the first half an hour. Um, instead of playing all that footage again... Um, and playing all that battle, what I'm going to do is basically launch a proper Darth Mod campaign. I'm going to just quickly go through and do exactly what I did within that last half an hour. And we'll start the campaign again because, yeah, lucky I caught that pretty early in the campaign. But for whatever reason, it bugged up. So, um, I'll be back in a sec on the new save that I've had to now create. There might be some disparities here and there with units lost, but it's not going to be too much of a biggie. Alright, so... I'll be back in a sec. Okay, guys, welcome back to the campaign map. We're back on the brand new save on Darth Mod Fully Fledged. Okay, so there might be a couple of just units here and there that look a little bit different. There might even be some AI turns that are a bit different as well. Okay, so we're pretty much exactly where we were. We currently have Arthur Wellesley, Duke of Wellington, with Stahl. He has the army just outside the Netherlands, and they've got an army inside. We'll play that battle in today's episode. Back up in the north, everything's good. The Dutch Navy has moved into the channel. That didn't happen last time. And we don't have as many fleets. We don't have as many ships down in Gibraltar, because um, I had to basically auto-resolve those two other naval um, battles, which is a little bit unfortunate, because there wasn't a point of playing it again. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll fight this one. So we have 360 men per unit, which is what I like, compared to the 160 that happened before. So let's continue on with the campaign. We have the Battle of Amsterdam in 1805. Hopefully we can take, liberate Holland and we'll, use, we'll basically use this as our base of operations as we push down into Belgium and 
France. Alrighty, let's set things up. So, a little bit hilly, a little bit forestry. And they obviously have the city streets to hold out. Okay, so, they do outnumber us. So, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. I'm just trying to think where's the best place to deploy my cannons, my artillery. I think uh, there actually seems to be a, a weird little high-rise there, so I think we'll use that to our advantage. We'll move everyone here. We'll get the general staff to sit about here, and we'll get the cavalry to just try and hit something. There's a lot of garrison units there, thankfully. If we can pick apart them, that would be brilliant. So we might have to move up to about here. We might actually be able to use the forest for cover. Because when you... Like, if they're out in the open and you can hide in a forest, you actually take less damage holding in there. It's a really nice sort of protective barrier. They do struggle the AI to shoot through trees. So, we'll try and use this high ground elevation as well. High ground, using the high ground elevation is always really beneficial as well. So, we'll move the artillery up to get into a better position. And then I think we'll chuck everyone about here. We actually seem to be below a hill, so there seems to be a slight high rise above where my infantry wants to deploy there. So, we'll go there. We'll move the cannons up and we'll start shelling the absolute boogery out of them. So, the first battle of this campaign Arthur Wellesley has invaded the Netherlands. And has brought the finest of what Britain has to offer. So, we'll chuck our cavalry on the left-hand side. And we'll try and do some hammer and anvil strikes against some units if we can catch them. Obviously, we want to try and get over as quick as we can. Maybe try and neutralize the cavalry. Or potentially even the, um, the cannons as well. So, we'll move you maybe here towards the forest just to get rid of that line of sight. The front line and the artillery haven't made it to their position just yet. Okay, Wellesley, we'll try and move him up as safely as we can, but we want to be able to sort of shield him as well. Last thing we want is him to get wounded. I'm pretty sure everyone else can get killed, but Wellesley, I'm assuming, in the same boat as Napoleon, probably can't be killed in this campaign. Okay, so it's swung actually not in our favor. It's probably 60, 55 in theirs. Okay, so let's unlimber there and look to get some shots off. So we are attacking them at the end of the day. So they're probably not going to come right at us. All right, cavalry, let's see if we can expose any unit there. Okay, so we've got some armed citizenry there. We might actually try and make a play on it, because they are, although there's a lot of them, 500 a unit, we might be able to get a good charge on them. It's all about momentum with cavalry and Napoleon Empire. If you can get a high octane charge off and send them flying, you can really disrupt them. So we'll try and hit them for all three sides. So they're getting some quick shots off here. Okay, we pushed up a little bit up a hill, so it's not as good as I would have liked, but we'll hit them from the flank. But that might be enough to break and cripple this exposed Dutch unit here that's been caught out of position. Okay, they've got more here. Okay, we'll try and get my cannons to target their artillery. If we could get rid of those cannons, we'll be able to sit back and relax and rain fire and death upon them with impunity. And then that actually might encourage them to charge. But... The cavalry has done their job, taking out one. I guess we just go for the the weaker units there. Yeah, the armed citizenry. Because I reckon we would have a harder time potentially going for the, the actual units that are not garrison-based. I reckon they've just got better quality equipment. That's the main thing. They probably have swords that they can draw and, and, and decent high-quality bayonets. But at the moment, we're just shelling the absolute hell out of them. And they're just calculating whether or not to charge or move up. They're reforming the back line, but they seem to be sending some cavalry up. We might need to form square if that comes any closer. We'll pull my cavalry out, because I reckon 
they're probably about to go into an open field here. We might be able to catch another Dutch infantry unit. Yeah, an armed citizen unit is leading from the front. We'll quickly reform the line. And we might be able to get a charge here, if we're lucky. Alright, keep pounding that artillery position. There's too many units for me to send my cavalry there. So, got to keep an eye on that one coming towards my front line. It's just a problem we're about to charge as they're coming towards me. Uh, quickly form square. Yeah, they're kind of baiting me here a bit because they've got that better quality unit behind. We'll try and hit that from all sides and maybe quickly buckle it. We form square quick enough that the AI hasn't... Oh, it, it, it backed off, which is brilliant. Okay, hit that. Okay, so maybe that's not too bad. That was a regiment unit that was a bit stronger. I think it was actually a part of the army, not the garrison. So the cavalry unit <laughs> just got wiped as it came up. From a lot of decent volleys. Okay, that's actually been caught. They're now in a full retreat. Send one unit back. And already, we're starting to swing the tide in this battle. The battle for Amsterdam. In our favour. It's about a 50-50 now. Okay, continue to hit that artillery if we can. We are number it with three to their one, so just keep on pounding it, boys. All right, more cavalry is coming in. Another armed citizenry coming up. Okay, they're now retreating. Good. Putting my cavalry to work. Okay, so we need to pull back a bit slightly, maybe reform. Continue to run them down because they're gonna they got the high ground there those oh the, oh actually they're armed citizenry I was like oh there's a regiment there forming up okay I still think we're in a really good position if we don't have to make our way intertwining through the city streets I'd be happy wayward shell shot there okay so let's charge against them. Man, my cavalry is having an absolute field day against these guys. Yeah, so we didn't... Oh, we knocked, knocked over a couple of them. It's basically just trying to send them flying. Like, they stumbled over there more than anything. Okay. One of them might be able to hit it. So, that cavalry unit that charged is actually regathered here in the city. So, the cavalry are fighting in the city streets. And we're hitting another unit here. Most of the army's just sitting back, just out of range. Well, if we're still continuing to cripple and crush Dutch infantry, I'll just wait. Allow my cavalry to do most of the work. They're getting their chevrons up nice and high. They've actually left an artillery piece there, just vulnerable, so we'll go for that. And they're actually pulling further back, away from the city. Okay, my cavalry's actually struggling there. They're actually trading quite well. Damn. We might lose a decent amount of cavalry there. Um, I guess we'll hold. We're not in range anymore. That's the problem. So we might have to move our artillery there now, routing, which is good. Okay, yeah, we're really trading hard. Throw all the cavalry against that. Wow, they're actually quite holding their own. That's decent for them. Okay, but now that we go 3 to 1, they retreat. Fantastic. Oh no, we're one of us is wavering as well. Might have been in range. I got caught there. Okay, let's pull back slightly. Oh no, they've recovered. Thankfully. I guess thanks to the units there. Okay. I'm just trying to think, should we move up? This is an armed citizen unit. Let's try and weaken it up a bit. Because the artillery seems to be hitting them. In, uh, okay, they were hitting them before they were in the line of sight, but now they're pushed into the city streets. We're struggling slightly. I guess they went in to get some cover. It might be worth sending in the cavalry to finish those guys off and then just. Yeah. Stop. Just turn off fire at will for the moment. And we'll allow the cavalry to do with that. I think we move everyone up. So. Because we want to move the artillery up. 
because they're just hanging further back. Okay, not a good charge. So I think we'll move the cavalry here. Slight little bit of high ground elevation. It's going to make things difficult to arc the shot up and over the buildings if they sit just that far back. But I think what we'll do is we'll move the infantry through the streets and just try and use, I guess, the buildings as a little bit of natural protection. And we'll move Wellington and stall the general's bodyguard behind that house. Okay, looks like they're reforming. They might actually come at us once we move up. But so far, still 60%. The cavalry unit gone, mostly their trash tier units. They've still got a bunch of their regiment there, which they still outnumber us, so it is definitely not all smooth sailings just yet. We'll move the, the cavalry to the left flank. Essentially, with one phase one, phase two and third, and the final act is still to come. Okay, so we'll get everyone to form up. Oh yeah, they're coming. They might actually charge here. Okay. That's as probably best as we're going to get. Positioning wise. Maybe pull further back because they've come a lot closer now. Okay, we'll swing my cavalry on the left. Yeah, they're really coming for it. Try and target those weaker units again. But to be honest, like even though my cavalry is exhausted... Against hitting these trash tier units, they're they're actually it's actually kind of work. It, like even though the Dutch are losing them, we're actually expending a lot of energy to do so, weakening my cavalry. So a decent volley from a decently well well trained regiment unit probably could rip through us if we're not careful. So we've moved the artillery up and we'll unlimber. We'll try and get some shots off again. What I'm hoping is it might cause a charge if we're lucky. If we can make them sort of waste time and energy intertwining through the streets to try and hit our front line, that'll be good. Because I don't think they would um, come at us any closer, to be honest. Come on, are you going to shoot? Maybe not. I want to see a cool cinematic shot from the artillery. Okay, they're coming now. Oh, God. Here they come. Okay, so we'll see how much they commit on this left flank, and then we'll try and get around it. They're putting a lot on my left flank. There's four units there. We're going to have enough. I think hit that. Right, let's give out some attack orders. We need to absolutely pepper that left flank because there's a lot of them clustering there. And I don't know if our two units there are probably going to hold in the end. So, we'll put the pressure on. With artillery supremacy support on the left flank. And the cavalry just to protect the that infantry there that's a little bit exposed. We might actually need to reform the line slightly. Because they're putting a lot on there. Like, can you ang can you be angled slightly? Like that that would probably be a bit better for them. Like angle it like that, just the way they are encroaching on an angle. Make it a bit better. I want to try and go for the general here. Okay, so they're forming up. We we weren't able to turn. That's annoying. Their general's there. Let's go for him. Let's just throw everything on that. Okay, still hitting them now with our artillery as they're moving in. Oh, we might not be able to catch him here. This would be huge if we can do that. Be huge. Okay, so now the center's coming in. Yep, so hit that. Okay. My god. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So we're currently trading some fire here. The Dutch front line is attacking ours, and we're trading fire. The third regiment of foot. Our cavalry has managed to get the enemy general. Fantastic. 
So that means they won't be able to stand in combat for much longer if a, if a big old fight breaks out. Okay, hit that, even though it's a fourth regiment. Risk it. So the third is holding for now. Dude, those brave souls. Cavalry charging, artillery firing overhead. Okay. Further down the line. We have some engaging. Oh, there's, there's more engaging in the street as well. They're now routing. Brilliant. We're getting flanked on the left, but they are wavering. It's fine. We'll send in a cavalry charge. All right. Let's get the artillery to stop hitting the left flank now and bring it back to the center. Because you're actually... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at this. There's a brilliant firing arc in there. They're going to be able to fire down right into the city now. This left flank is absolutely capitulating. Thanks to all everything I threw at it. We've got the 6th Regiment of Foot holding the bank smack center. And they're currently trading with the... The Dutch. Dutch 11th. Okay, what are they doing? Nothing's too much going on the right. It's mostly the center and... And left. Okay, I'm actually going to move Wellington up. And stall. Because now that we're trading quite hard and there's no artillery, he's probably in a safer position to do so. But you never know. Someone could get Nelson, thank <laughs> God, and get sort of picked off or more. We don't want that. A lot of these generals you start off with didn't have the best of ends. <laughs> well, I guess it's the same in the Napoleon campaign. Most of the marshals of the Grand Armée were dealt with and finished off with the musket in the end. With their backs against the wall. So the fifth here is holding quite well. There's a lot clustering there. But their regiments are not too bad. They're trading quite well. Yeah, because look at the way. Yeah, some of us aren't. Oh, okay. So this. Yeah, we need to move you here. My right side does not look healthy. Okay, I might need to move my cavalry back because we've got a bit of a problem here because all, I've pumped everything into my center and left flanks. My right is exposed. And they're taking a little bit of losses here. Probably the most. So we'll bring in the general. Oh! We can't even bloody see them. Just fire into the trees. Fire into the smoke. Oh, wow. We're also firing by rank as well. Okay. About a 70% now. Okay, that's a bit of a bait. So my cavalry was just trying to run down that unit that didn't fully run away. Which is annoying. It probably... It distracted me a bit. We'll bring that back around. Thankfully, we got that general. Or otherwise, it might have been a different story. So, the Dutch have retreated from the the charge. But they're just trying to recover a little bit. They're coming now back in. Okay. We're in a really, really good position now. Yeah, they're in, that's actually not too bad of a bad spot for the second regiment of foot for the Dutch. Okay, they're pulling back. So, sort of realistically, I'd love to liberate the Dutch, get them to fight alongside with us, but just because of the gameplay mechanics of Napoleon, I think it would be far better served to actually occupy the Netherlands, because we've got to win at this stage. We're in a really, really good position. We've got this in the bag. There's only a couple more units just holding. But I think using that as basically a base of operations, because otherwise I'm going to be constantly sending units from London and risking the Navy in the channel. So, I think that's what we'll do. But we'll kind of roleplay that we've liberated them. Okay, watch out for the musket fire and artillery. Oh god, they copped a little bit there. Um, we'll drop down the morale buffs. But a little bit hard fought this one. It wasn't definitely a clean cut auto resolve. No way. Darth Modern Empire do have quite harsh ones, so we're going to have to play a lot of battles in this series. But you want to have good fights against the French, the Grand Armée, Spain, and we're going to start things off with the Dutch. But we'll see how we go. We might have more enemies that pop up. The coalition is nice and cushy for now. Everyone seems to be okay, but 
Napoleon did come back after all. After everyone started arguing about the future and fate of Europe. <laughs> so, a British-Russian alliance particularly is always unstable. And Prussia and, I guess, Austria to some extent. But we'll see how we go. We'll see on the reception. If you're enjoying this series, support it. I'll do more. Like, the Spartan campaign was a really good example. You guys just absolutely went nuts for that. And I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying this campaign. You guys are as well. Boom. 22 episodes I'm planning on doing. And more of that campaign will be coming out soon. Oh, they recovered those bastards. <laughs> I was going to say, those guys that we ran... All the way to get. They came back. Oh my god. Even some of the... you got to give it to the Dutch. They are fighting to the bitter end. Protect Amsterdam. Protect the coffee shops. And the district. <laughs> uh, the British soldiers are going to have a hell of a time rolling on into Amsterdam. Alright, come on, artillery. Just hit this. Just throw everything at it. Come on. Just this one unit there. Just get everyone to hit it. Boom, boom, boom. Just bomb the absolute hell of it. Come on. Hey, victory. Alrighty. Um, yeah, I guess we're in that one. Another heroic victory. I'll take that all day. Couple good results. Oh my god. <laughs> We were nearly outnumbered three to one. Crikey. We only lost 400 men. We absolutely smashed the Dutch resistance. Oh my god. Cavalry got a thousand kills. That's nuts. The light dra dragoons of the British Army. Well, British Army, mate. We're not an army. Uh, yeah, so we can liberate the Republic of. Holland, Amsterdam, where we can just straight up occupy it. Yeah. I'd love to, like, liberate it, but I think just because the mechanics of Total War and how it sort of works, we're going to have to peacefully occupy and use it as a base of operations. We'll be able to replenish, repair. Because I don't even trust the Dutch. <laughs> Never trust the Dutch. That famous Austin Powers quote. Um, yeah, I wouldn't trust them if we were to move away. So, um, we actually border with Prussia now. Get an alliance? Yeah. We actually didn't have an alliance with them, technically. Okay. I don't want an alliance with the Ottomans. I think that's fine. Does Portugal want that alliance? No. Yeah, so it's probably a smart idea to make an alliance with them. Um, we have a new university in the Netherlands. Utrecht. I guess we go with fire advance. Oh, growth actually. Maybe the wealth is probably not a bad idea in the future to get as well. But money-wise, that's not an issue, I don't think. Anyway, let's end the turn to continue and see if the French or the Spanish react. They're taking some trade nodes in the Mediterranean. Austria's mobilizing. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do in this campaign. The major coalition partner. Prussia's now moving up. Yeah, so they're probably going to focus on, like, Italy and French-occupied Rhine territories, you'd imagine. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. Um, we have an opportunity to intercept. I'm going to decline because there's only two units. Yeah, we're not going to be able to win that, no way. I'm not that good. <laughs> so a lot of demands in the Netherlands. I'm not, let's say, a legend of total war. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. So we've got some reinforcements coming from London. We'll head them over to the Nederlands. And we'll just use the, the fleet that was sitting there. So we're about to get a bunch of line infantry, six or so. And that should be enough. Like, we, we'll be able to hold... The Netherlands, they ain't going to take the fortress. We're basically going to set up there. We'll bring the spy over as well to give us some line of sight. I arguably... Sh oh, no, I was going to say, well, I probably should have brought him over earlier, but I don't think he had the movement to get from Wales 
to London that quickly. So we'll move south. Yeah, so this is um, Bel it's Brussels, isn't it? Because technically Waterloo was fought in the Netherlands in this time period, but it was actually modern-day Belgium, wasn't it? The Benelux regions trade territory quite a bit. Okay, um, I think we're good here now. I guess we'll end the turn and continue. But I'm going to have to make plans to send units down to Gibraltar in the end anyway. But let's see if the French attack or the AI sort of react. But the Netherlands is pretty much no more. We don't have to deal with them or their navy. Oh, here we go. Kingdom of Spain. Uh, once again, another opportunity to intercept. I'm going to decline. Okay, so they threw out the fleet from the Gibraltar port. We've still got a lot of recruitment on the way. Uh, they're actually sieging me out. Well, I reckon we'll play this one in the next. Oh, they stopped my port being created. That, that's annoying. I wasted a couple of turns on that. That's a quite a... Oh, I was going to say, that's quite a large garrison. I guess it spawned in. Okay, cool. So we'll move them there. Oh, we've got a full stack here now. We're sweet. So we can send everything down to Spain if we want. A Danish fleet is nearby. We'll rally things up. We've got some more rate ships on the way. Those Highland units have only just now made it to London. And we'll move those naval ships in because now we have two decent fleets one in the channel one in the Gibraltar Strait okay well unfortunately guys it's time to end the video here <laughs> thank you very much for watching hope you've enjoyed episode one of my total war napoleon definitive edition united kingdom campaign on darth mod we've done quite well we had the battle of trafalgar we had the battle for amsterdam and I guess we'll deal with the battle against the Spanish in the next episode. Then we can hopefully have some land battles against the French, Napoleon, and his Grand Army. All right, sweet. I'm going to play the outro now and say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. All right, guys. Take care, everyone. Much love. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you'd like to stay connected with me. Let me know feedback and suggestions for the video. Got to say a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tal, Liam B, Kyle P, Tom C, and Wyatt P. So thanks guys, my name is Ben Simsey, much love from Australia, goodbye.